today with a dosha constitution. Now we're going to start to look at these individual doshas. So how do we know about vata? When is it dominant? Not just because of a physical signs in the body. So the quality of vata and its characteristics. So its elements are space and air. How do we know when its qualities are dominant? These are the specific qualities that we describe to vata. So dry, if it's more of a dry climate, or if the body is dry, or the food is dry, or the throat is dry from too much talking, then all of these qualities are more vata. If it's cold, you know, if it's cold in body, cold in food, again, it's going to increase vata. Light, now this is light and uplifting, just like these two elements, they like to be at the top. They're light and they move upwards. Generally, vata is also quite light as well. It's subtle, uh, mobile, movement is a key one for vata. It's constantly in motion and moving like the wind. So if we get a lot of mobile movement, then it's going to create more vata. Jogging practices, these will all build more vata. Subtle, its effect is not so obvious. It's not something you notice. When the wind penetrates into you, you think, oh, it's just a bit of wind. But if that happens a lot, it starts to create imbalances inside the body. I'm sure you're all familiar with traditional Indonesian generations. They're like, oh, don't go out in the wind. It's, it's going to hurt you. Wind invasion. And the young people are like, wind. <laughs> well, it counts. It's one of the qualities. Is it something you'll notice straight away? No, it's subtle. Its effect is slow. If it's a person with a lot of vata, they may be subtle in the way that they're doing something. They're not going to do like, Peter, this is what I want you to do. Go over there, do that. It's going to be like, Oh, do you think it would be okay if, if maybe I have a little bit of your drink? Yeah. Whereas the pit is like, can I have a bit of your drink? <laughs> They've already done it straight away, goal orientated. So they're more subtle in their approach. Irregular. If we see irregularity on the body, so if the shoulders are different sizes, if there's differences in the hips, face, fruit that's all irregular in different directions. Wherever we see irregularity, there's more vata. We try as much as we can to make the room even because it decreases the vata in the room. If we had chairs all over the place and your room was really messy, there was all this clutter, then there's more vata that's in that room. Clear, it's easy to see through. So if we had water, even though it's water, pure water is clear. So it's going to be more cleansing. It draws things out of the body. That's why it's still in that deficiency spectrum because it has some of these qualities of vata. And astringent, it makes all the tissues draw together and compact. Yeah? So as we get older, vata builds and we become more astringent and stuck in our ways. What are the things that it governs inside the body? The functions, so all movement, whether it's our body movement, nervous system movement, digestive movement, all of these are governed by this quality of vata. Inspiration, to breathe in and expiration, to breathe out is governed by vata. Our enthusiasm, our like, yeah, I want to do that. I want to go for something is a quality of vata. Our desire, so like, yeah, I'm passionate about this. Let's get activity towards it. The excretion of our waste products, letting go. So we saw as we got into a lot of vata dominant foods, lots of green smoothies, it went excretion of waste products. <laughs> it went into that principle even more. So the colors are purple and black. If you ever see these colors on someone's body uh, or in the environment, then it shows that vata may be building. So if we start to see those qualities anywhere, vata is present. What do you think might be an animal that best represents vata, to try and remember it. We want something that's going to be a penguin. a penguin. Why do you think the penguin? It's, black and it's, it's in the cold, great, yeah. See, I, I love asking these questions to the group because you get all these analogies and people will always remember that a lot easier than trying to remember all of this. It's like, oh, the penguin, it's black and it's cold. Huh? So, what else have we got? In Ayurveda, they like to use the crow. Uh, the crow uh, is a flying bird. Uh, the flying birds 
you bring that, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's black. Uh, it's nervous and flighty. It likes to move around a lot. They also say that the crow in shamanism is the messenger to the spirit world. So it, it makes a lot of noise, which Vata makes a lot of noise. They like to talk a lot. It's like, ah, ah, always making noise. Uh, it's quite a fearful bird. It's not calm and relaxed. It's always like, well, what's going on? What's happening around me? So it really represents these qualities of Vata a lot. So, in balance. When Vata is fully in balance, we've got our enthusiastic, vivacious person. We can bring these ones up fairly quickly. Um, joyful and serene. They love the world. They're alert. They're a quick learner. They're confident, able to go, yeah, this is what I want to do. Light but sound sleep, still able to sleep. Moves lightly and gracefully. Smooth skin and regular bowels. Now, very different to what Vata is when it's out of balance. When Vata is out of balance, we see the opposite. They're restless. Their mind is all over the place. Their nervous system is all strung. Nervous and flighty. What's the next thing? Forgetful and spacey. They can't remember anything. So common for Vata. Anxious and worried. Not sure about this. What to do there? What's going to happen with the family, the children? This anxious and worry leads them to difficulty sleeping. <laughs> They're just like, oh, I stay up at night. It's so easy to move into insomnia. Body pains and stiffness, this astringent quality stops the circulation from moving. We saw this body pains that were happening when she had too much vata, dominant foods that happened. Dry skin, the skin will become quite dry as well. Constipated, the bowels don't work properly. We can sometimes have looseness if it's a lot of raw foods, but also it can be constipation that will happen with this. Aggravating vata. So how do we get all of those things? We get all of those things by doing this. We worry, loss, separation, fasting and eating on the run. If you're eating and you're always on the go, it's going to build more vata. Eating dry, frozen or leftover foods, not a lot of fresh. You don't get enough sleep and you work the graveyard shift, meaning at night. If you stay up at night, you're taking yourself closer to the graveyard. <laughs> this vata quality will build. Keep no routine whatsoever and run around a lot. Cars, planes, trains, anything that's in movement and motion. So never lubricate your skin. Never rub oil onto the skin and really lubricate the tissues. So avoid tranquil, warm, moist places. Now that is going to create a lot of imbalances inside the body. On top of that, you could use stimulating drugs like cocaine, speed and coffee. All of these are going to heighten the nervous system, dry out the tissues, create more deficiency inside the body. What would happen to balance that? How could we help to calm Vata? If we've got too much Vata, we need to keep warm and especially the lower portions. One of the things of the doshas is we could also divide the body into Vata, Pitta and Kapha. The lower part of the body is vata. It's what's moving around and doing all of these things. The middle part of the body is pitta. It's where all the regulating and transforming parts happen. The upper part of the body is kapha. This is where the heaviest parts of the body are. The lubricating fats of the brain. All of these kapha qualities where we make mucus. So the lower part, vata, is where we need to warm. If someone is getting cold, they should be warming the feet first. Allow the warmth to come up through the body. Remain calm and use deep nasal breathing. Deep nasal breathing into the belly is going to keep the body a lot calmer, the nervous system calmer. Remember the nutrition for the air element was breathing. So how you breathe is going to make the nervous system, the vata, a lot more balanced. If you breathe a lot, <laughs> what happens to the nervous system? Oh, heightened up. It's like, oh, I see a tiger in the woods. <laughs> the nervous system's up. It's like, boom, movement. It's all of these vata qualities compared to deep, slow, less air is going to ground down this vata. So if you've got a lot of vata and you can remember just that one thing, I am going to do deep nasal breathing as much as I can all day. I guarantee you, you'll forget about it all day. <laughs> but you just need to try it again and try it again. And each time that vata will decrease and you won't be forgetting about things so much. 
limit raw foods and especially cold foods. So this is the body type Vata that doesn't deal well with a raw foods diet. Now, thankfully it's not the season here, so you can still, even if you have a lot of Vata, still integrate some raw foods into your diet. But if it's your dominance, it's not gonna work so well for you. Eat warm foods and spices with plenty of easy to digest fats. They need those fats, that water element, that grounding, stabilizing effect. Keep a regular routine, especially meals and sleeping times. So, Vata loves routine because that air element is constantly changing. So they need to balance with the opposite. They need to eat their meals at the same time each day. Have their sleeping at the same time each day. Prayer in the same position of the house at the same time each day. Great for balancing Vata. Daily exercise should be dominantly meditative and relaxing. They do not need to do jogging. Jogging five days a week for Vata is going to be a disaster. And they'll probably find that they think it's great. They're like, oh, but I love jogging. I feel so much better after jogging. It's because any Vata quality creates this separation. So imagine you're a Vata and you're worried and you're thinking about this and you're like, I get up in the morning, I go for a jog. Yeah. And we separate from that. Yeah. We push away the worry and the fear, but we left ourselves more vulnerable more deficient afterwards. So, yes, a little bit of warmth and a little bit of jogging is great and everyone needs to do that. We were born to run. There's no doubt about it. It's definitely not a daily practice for a Vata dominant person. And if we looked at like a really cold climate, a Vata season, there'd be like snow on the ground out there. Go try running in that condition. You just weren't meant to do it. Nature was trying to encourage it. Instead, people in those Vata dominant climates, they're like, oh, I'll go to the gym and I'll run on the walker. <laughs> we were meant to be doing more internal, balanced, calming exercises in that climate. Dominate in sweet, sour and salty tastes. In the six medicinal taste chart, I've given which tastes are the most important to balance which dosha.